Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Expert section where we're delighted this morning to have with us Brian Nolt of uh, Blue Water Federal Solutions. Brian, you're the president and the co-founder and you had a background at Ford Motor Company where you were very successful. You've been extremely successful at Blue Water Federal Solutions. Not your first bid, but your very second bid. You won from the TSA a $100 million contract. And I know while there are a lot of people who would like to take all the credit themselves, you're so magnanimous because you said to me, no, it's not all about me, Hillary. So do share with our audience. Well, that's right. You know, in bidding federal contracts today, no one can take credit for doing all the work that's necessary to put in a fabulous proposal. But not only in the proposal process, but all of the pre-work to understand exactly what needs uh, the customers have and how you're going to respond to those needs. So everything from the pre-planning and the capture phase and getting in with the customer, making the right relationships, understanding the other players mm -hmm. that the customer needs uh, in there, not just your own capabilities. So it wasn't focused on Blue Water, it was focused on the government. It's focused on the government mm -hmm. and the capabilities that we would put together that would be the total solution for that customer because in that case it was a very large contract with very uh, broad requirements. Yes, and as, since it was so early on in the founding of your firm, we have a lot of viewers, a lot of them are large government contractors, but right. many of them are smaller and we also have viewers that might want to be entering into the government contracting community. What would you say is, was your catalyst and how did you first start out to enter into the space? Well, to get started, we really had to focus on some of the smaller aspects, not going after the, the, the very large contract, but to understand the market, to understand how uh, we would go about uh, winning contracts. Um, so I had worked with Key Solutions at that time, mm -hmm. uh, back in the early stages, uh, to kind of get a, a good firm uh, feel for the market and how you would go about winning because working in uh, a commercial environment like Ford Motor Company is much different than the longer cycles that it takes in the federal contract. Correct. So that's how um, we started, but then when we really got in and started to focus on the bigger elements like this very large uh, TSA contract, uh, we found ourselves in, in a pretty good situation going in because of the type of companies that were already working in there and how we were able to pull those together along with the relationships that we'd already established early on with that customer. Brian, you talked about how you got started, and I think that's interesting for our viewers, but also for our viewers, subcontractors and primes, and even anyone entering the marketplace. How have things changed since then, and what do you see in the procurement process that's different for you today? Well, clearly today uh, is a very challenging environment compared to 2004, 2005, and even earlier when the government was moving very quickly to uh, bring requirements on. There were a lot of contracts being let. Uh, th there were a lot of, of dollars uh, being funded into mm -hmm. growth within Homeland Security, Defense, and other- ramp up. Uh, exactly. Today, you see a pullback. So some of the unique challenges today that, that don't change, there was, is things like stiff competition mm -hmm. still remains, mm -hmm. going against fewer dollars longer procurement cycles, so the planning and the targeting and the focus that a business has to have today has to be that much better than it was, say, a few years ago when there were a lot of dollars yes. and we were all moving out for those uh, to try and target those customers. So you need to really sharpen the saw is what you're saying to the yes. audience, but also you mentioned you know, your team. You gave great credit to your team. There's yes. also the teaming of how do you convince a major prime that you should be the sub of choice? That's a great question. And in terms of a small business today, there are many, as I just said, stiff competition out there for small businesses, not only at the federal side, but also to work with major primes. Yes. And you really have to focus on how you target those jobs and the primes that are going to be going after those in terms of value add. Can I help the prime win the business? So your track record, your niche capability. Exactly. And am I able to also bring relationships to mm -hmm. that prime mm -hmm. uh, with the customer and things of that nature? So it is very focused 
You cannot go everywhere. It's not a handout for small businesses, clearly. You have to bring something, and there are those value-add things that primes are looking for, large primes are looking for, in addition to bringing on a small business to help them mm -hmm. to meet the goals of small business. And also, of course, meeting always the goals of the government. That's right. That's exactly right. So Brian, you've talked a little about being a sub to a prime, but there are a lot of set-asides out there for your business, for other small businesses, for many of our viewers watching today. What would be some of your tips and the keys to accessing and gaining one of those set-asides? Well, you have to focus on three things in my estimation, and that has helped us be successful here at Blue Water. That is building the relationships with the customers that you've targeted, mm -hmm. building good capabilities that you can target customers to fulfill, meaning in other words, don't try to be all things to all customers across the entire federal spectrum. It isn't going to work. Be focused. Be very focused. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, once you win contracts, you have to execute them because one of the things that small businesses must do is hang on to that business. As the incumbent, do As all the, incumbent. the right things. So key, in, in recent uh, days here, we were just awarded two follow-on contracts which were key to our continued success. We did that by not only uh, writing good proposals but preparing for those proposals. Sometimes when you have a customer, you think you know everything they want, but then you go off and write it that way versus really understanding what their proposal is requiring through the RFP requirements. So have a dialogue with your customer, a Very dialogue with so. the government. Yeah. And obviously good performance is going to help a lot yes. during the execution. So that's really a key in sustaining your business in what I think is today's environment of smaller programs as I mentioned earlier and less, uh, less dollars coming into the marketplace. So if you want to compete you have to be focused on that very, very, very important aspect of the business, keeping your business that you already have. Yes. Brian, like any business, and like most of our viewers too, you win some, you lose some. What are some of the lessons though that you've learned from some of those, maybe some of the losses in particular? Well, again, spot on. If you don't put in proposals, you can't win and you can't win them all because of, as I said, competition. One of the things that we do at Blue Water is we build a best lessons learned database and we track all of our lessons learned. We have mm -hmm. been on some very large procurements with integrators as primes and as a prime ourselves. And I'd love to think that we could win them all, but when we don't win them, we always offer, uh, ask for and receive a debrief from the government. Like a 360 review, everybody's Exactly, internally but also, importantly, going to the government and asking them to give us a full debrief on what we did and, and how they rated us so that we can bring that back and understand our mistakes. No, that's excellent. And then, well, once you've got those mistakes, what do you do to rectify them? That's important. Well, then when you go back to your next capture process, you try to look at your lessons learned, look at the things you did wrong, and avoid those mistakes. Could you give for our audience one that particular that comes to mind that they may have either not learned about and that you have some great tips? A great tip, yes. <laughs> when they're asking for a specific capability or a specific uh, software, hardware unit, whatever, it's best that you don't try to bring in an alternative approach when they're asking for a maintenance as an example on Oracle. You don't want to be coming in and talking about how you're going to help them in the sequel. Okay, thank you. Brian, our audience is made up of prime subs, all sorts of sizes of companies, but today focusing for our audience on small businesses, what are the keys to winning from your Blue Water perspective? Well, Hillary, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and represent yeah. our company. The one thing I would really say up front to all small businesses is don't be, try to be all things to all customers. That's excellent. Customers mm -hmm. don't like that. Primes are not looking for that. You have to really stay focused as I've tried to iterate through this uh, discussion and build your capability, focus on making it and perfecting it to the point where you can use that as past performance. 
and then you can grow when you have the experiences, and that's how, custo how customers want to see it, and that's how companies succeed. Right. That's how we that's succeeded it. at Blue Water. The other thing I think that is important is that in the marketplace, there are a lot of what, what is known as GWACs, mm -hmm. government-wide yeah, contracts, contracts, and they set aside a lot for uh, small businesses. So whether you're a prime or a sub, you really should work to get on some of those GWACs because that's where a lot of the business pushes uh, from the customers out in those task orders. Yes, and you also have, were emphasizing to me about your team. You really believe it's all about the team. First and foremost, you cannot, there is no I in team, it's not me, but there is about, in small businesses, there is this whole notion of building the team. It's not easy. I don't care if you're in a big company like Ford or Lockheed, CSC, you name it, and Blue Water Federal. You have to have a good team, you have to have a focused team, and you have to have a business plan to follow. Right. You need the map. And I know you're very committed to your team. I don't Absolutely. want to keep you any longer this morning because you've been great. I want to thank you for coming on, and thank you for all the things you've shared, particularly from your perspective. So. Thank you so much.